The gentleman you see behind me has been making waves online because at the age of just 21, he figured out how to turn plastic waste into usable gasoline. What makes his accomplishment even more amazing is the fact that he did it in his backyard with literally scraps from a junkyard. His name is Julian Brown and he's a 21 year old inventor from Metro Atlanta who founded Nature Jab, also known as Jabs, Pyrolysis and Energy Recovery. He's been self-teaching microwave-based pyrolysis for about five years, aiming to run his gasoline-style fuel from plastic waste. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how that could change the world. All of the ocean's plastic waste, all the trash that we produce every day. If we could turn that into fuel, we could almost have a never-ending supply. He's tested it at labs and it runs cleaner and more efficient than diesel, jet fuel, and regular fuel. Hey, solid night, God fam. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I post. My goal is to bring you content unlike any other platform. You will not find a channel with more trending, raw, mind-bending content on the entirety of the internet, I promise you. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the show. How it works is it uses a homemade reactor powered by multiple microwave magnetrons, sometimes run off solar panels and generators, to heat the plastic in a low oxygen environment. The heated plastic breaks down into a crude goop, which he distills via vacuum or shop vac setups into liquid fuel, plastiline, claimed to emulate gasoline, diesel, or jet fuel. He's tested it by running an old carbureted truck on his fuel in Houston. Here's a quick video of what it's all about. Check it out. Plasta diesel. This here is plasta diesel. Scientifically proven to be cleaner than pump diesel. Here, I have plasta diesel. And over half a gallon of plasta diesel. Diesel I made. This is plastic diesel. The fuel I have created diesel. This behind me is my plastic into fuel reactor. And this is plastic diesel from plastic waste. Eugene Organ! Let's turn some plastic into fuel. Pretty cool, huh? But it hasn't come without its risks. He blew himself up in 2024, getting third degree burns on his legs. That boy gave that boy a fit now. Look at him. I'm being cooked alive by some, some, some damn invisible fire, the Holy Ghost. Boy, the Holy Ghost is burning me right I can't even see the fire. And unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. He's seemingly been starting to get threats on his life. He's been doing this for almost two years now, I'd say. I've been following the process pretty much the entire time. But lately, he started to gain traction. And now, he's starting to see backlash from possibly another industry within the gasoline fuel paradigm. He claimed that one day he went to pick up his vehicle after getting his tires balanced and all of his lug nuts on his tires were loose. He pulled over and only one was barely hanging on. That and the other night while he was sleeping in his van, choppers started flying circles around his sight and shining a bright spotlight into his van. It circled and did this up to five times. 
He later checked flight records using an app and he found that there was no records of these choppers in the area. So they were actually operating under stealth. Look, spotlight right at me. I don't know what's going on. This is the third time this helicopter's been here. Look, it has a spotlight on it. There's a helicopter spotlight that keeps circling around me. It's so loud though, like I can't even go to sleep. All right, so for those of you who have not seen my stories on Instagram, two nights ago, I was sleeping in Alabama where I work with my reactor and there was a helicopter that flew really low and had a spotlight at 10 o'clock at night. Flew over me, shined the spotlight right into my windshield, then flew away, came back, did it again, came back, did it again, came back and did it again. It came five times and this helicopter was flying so low I could feel the blades in my body. And I was recording it and posting it to my story, right? Letting everybody know what was going on. I was ready to leave. If it had done it a sixth time, I would have been gone. Let me tell you why this gets freaky. It starts to get scary now. Outside of how scary it is to have a helicopter circle you six times in the middle of the country where there's almost, like I've been there for a year, never seen a single helicopter out there. So to have a helicopter out there at night with a spotlight circle me five times is already freaky enough. But many of you suggested I get flight radar 24. I'm a gold member. I got it. I listened, okay? Because you can go back in time, you can select categories to figure out what type of plane you're looking for, right? Like if I wanted to do mil just helicopter, I could do the, all the filters. But then I can go back in time too to see. I can go directly back to the date and the time at which this happened. So right now I have it filtered for helicopters. And right now, as I'm filming this, these are every single helicopter that's flying in the world right now, everywhere. This app is pretty cool. And I gotta say, if you guys are watching Flight Radar, you can sponsor me because I actually really like this. I can't show you guys my screen because you'll know my location if I do that. But here's the scary part. I went back in time. I went hours before the helicopter ever showed up and just sat there looking at the screen. And guess what, guys? No helicopter ever showed up on flight 24 but you i have it on video there was a helicopter there but why was that helicopter not there i wish i could show you i can't give away my location and i know it's the exact time because instagram has the time when i posted it archived so i have the exact date the exact time i have the exact location and yet flight 24 is telling me there was no helicopter in the sky so and there were some other things i didn't say to you there were some points where the whole sky was lighting up like a flash and then I saw some stars in the sky that were moving. Oh, it was just a bloody shooting star or comet. No, these stars weren't moving like shooting stars. They were moving like, like up and then just disappeared. So I don't know what I saw and they were very high up. They were not, they were, this is not a drone. This was a star that was moving and disappeared. Needless to say, this shook him a little bit, but you got to give it to the kid because he's determined. He isn't stopping for anybody. He literally wants to help humanity. Check this video out right here where he doubles down on what he's gonna do. I know that I'm not gonna live long. And that's why I put every day, every hour, every minute into building, into growing. Why am I out here working on this plastic in the fuel reactor I've been working on for five years, since I was 17? Why am I out here in 100 degree weather? Why am I out here despite being falsely accused and reported to the EPA and the IRS? Why am I out here despite weird black helicopters that turn off their radar transponder circling me six times at night? Why am I out here sleeping in my van, crazy humidity, mosquitoes, gnats flying in, and yet I still do it. Why am I out here despite having to drive four hours every time I want to work on this machine because when I was doing it in my parents' backyard, I blew myself up and I had to go to the hospital for second degree burn surgery. I do this because this is my mission that I've assigned myself to. I do this because I do not fear death. I do not feel su fear suffering or uncomfortability. Do you know what I fear? I fear allowing an idea of something that may not even exist or happen, have enough control over your entire life to where you're not even really living your life. That's the only thing I fear. And thus, I am completely set on what I want to do here. And nothing will steer my course but myself. And I am not a quitter. And now that I've set my mind on this, because I wish to liberate humanity. I wish to liberate humanity from this cycle in which we're bound by waste, in the cycle in which we're bound by division, in the cycle in which we're bound by not knowing ourselves. I wish to free us all from all of this. And now that I'm set on that mission, I'm not giving up. And so it will happen, no matter what. Because you know what, to me, when I'm building something, I expect it to be hard. I expect it to be uncomfortable. I expect it to be difficult. You know why? Because that's the whole point. You have to suffer to grow. You have to feel uncomfortable to attribute value to what you do. So you may see this and you see a, a piece of metal with certain pieces of metal welded onto it, but I see it for what it really is. I see it because when I see this, I can go back in time to not just putting it together, but the motivation as to why I put it together, the hope, the purpose, the passion, all right here embodied. My soul is within this, just as yours is within anything you do and put your mind to as well.
So if you wonder why I'm out here and why I'm not going to do anything else but continue to stay on this mission until I see it through, until I say it's complete, that is why. Because it doesn't matter what anything externally is. There is no threat. There is no uncomfortability. There is no amount of suffering that will steer me from what I wish to do because that is the life I wish to live. It's inevitable. We need to do something to protect this kid because what he's doing is absolutely amazing. And he's innocent at the end of the day. He's just trying to help humanity. The stuff literally runs cleaner than our current fuels. And it's easier on motors and creates more horsepower. What's not to love about it? I don't know why the big oil industry doesn't just bring him in and actually use his invention for the betterment of humanity. But like I said, there ain't no stopping him. They're going to have to literally make him disappear to stop him. So... Hopefully he sticks with it and hopefully they lay off him. Trump, you need to protect this kid. But what do you all think? Is he going to make it? Is he going to bring something to the table that's never been done before? And is he going to change the auto industry and the gasoline industry forever? Next, we got to talk about this 19-year-old pilot who had just got his license and was raising money for cancer awareness by flying to all seven continents. But he was missing one at the very end. And he made a bold move to fly there just so he could be the first person to accomplish the feat. And he was arrested promptly at a base in Antarctica. He had been documenting his entire trip on Instagram, which is now deleted. But he flew to all six continents. And when he got to Chile, he actually filled out his flight log incorrectly on purpose just so he could fly over to Antarctica and land on a base on one of the islands. Needless to say, he was successful. His excuse was that he was having complications while flying and he had to take the course to where he ended up, which doesn't really make any sense, but a bold move nonetheless. People can't help but speculate what's gonna happen to the kid. Right now he's been detained. There's pretty strict rules about Antarctica, so who knows what's gonna happen? It's the one place that all countries agree nobody can go. And he went there. Do you think he saw anything? And if so, what do you think he saw? Are they going to make him disappear? So I saw a video on TikTok recently that absolutely blew my mind. And it had to do with what the actual source of volcanoes were. Where the magma comes from. How they were created. Why they are here. And when I tell you, it'll leave you baffled. Volcanoes all over the land come from the carcasses of dead dragons. Now before you leave, give me a chance. What it is, is it's literally the fire source of dragons, of fire breathing dragons from ancient, ancient times. They were absolutely massive. And this kid on TikTok named Brian Davenport does an amazing job of explaining and showing proof. The magma doesn't come from down in the earth's crust. If you look at dead volcanoes, there's no empty pit going into the earth almost always they have a bottom literally it's the gases and everything mixing up of what would have been the fire chamber of a massive dragon and when they erupt all the chemicals mix just right and the lava which is its blood and its organs all melted down blow into the air and it's literally like a fire breathing dragon this guy does a great job. I'm going to show a couple of his videos and let me know what you guys think. In Texas, there are these two dragons who shared the last breath with each other. On the mother's back, hundreds of oil rigs are built. The arrow points on mother's head. You can see the active oil rigs on her back and wings. Before I show you her, this is the baby dragon. Here is the mother dragon. Tales incredible. There are dragons everywhere, including underneath them. They pump oil out their veins. If you have time, look up Flesh Pit National Park because everything is bigger. This movie is telling you exactly what I've been teaching you. The lava comes out of dead dragons. They now litter the earth right under our noses. 
Lava is internal combustion. I think these games are going to be different. I've shown you thousands of photos of dead dragons with volcanoes in them and still haven't seen a dinosaur. But if that what you want to believe in fake plastic and cartoon dinosaurs, then maybe you aren't ready for the truth. But if you are... I went ahead and researched some volcanoes of my own and found some what looked to be dragons in the outline surrounding them. Check these out. You can literally see I outline here and I kind of shaded in the skeletal structure of this dragon, the head up here, and then look to the left, you can see its wings. It's literally its wings. And then right in the center is Mount Fiji. And again, in the Moana Lao volcano, you can see surrounding it, you can see the creature's head, its V-shaped body, a portion of its wing and right in the center of it the volcano these things were massive i have no idea how they died but it almost seems like our entire planet's land masses were once a flying dragon type serpent and i know you all have seen the one in antarctica with the snake head and the wings it's something similar to that these things were huge miles and miles long now that you've seen what i found check this guy's videos out they're absolutely mind-blowing crazy stuff right go to his page you'll see even more wild mind-blowing stuff so hope you guys like the video going forward i'm gonna change and do my format differently i finally got a up to par camera that i'm gonna start recording on i'm gonna try and cater and tailor my content more to youtube because let's face it youtube is one of the few platforms left that truly embrace and care about the creators i saw an interview with their ceo the other day and he was very optimistic he couldn't stress enough how he wanted creators to be able to make a living and that's the platform i want to thrive on though youtube's a little harder to thrive on i just need to change my format and i'm going to cover stories and different things uh, mystical creatures all kinds of cool stuff i'm kind of trying to emulate more content based like maybe wendigoon or you know Creators like him, he's doing really well, uh, and I like his format, and even the Fat Electrician, you know more, me talking in front of a screen, widescreen, and roll it to B-roll once in a while, throw out real pictures of the scenario I'm talking about, or illustrations, things along those lines. So you guys are going to be seeing a shift in my content, and I'm hoping it really pays off. I'm excited, I'm ready, and I'm ready to start giving you guys more content for one and different content. I'm super excited about it. But yeah, hopefully you liked the video. Uh, crazy, the whole situation with the gas, the plastiline guy, um, hopefully he stays okay. And uh, yeah, there's a lot more going on out here. The meteors that have been falling out of the sky, have a theory about those and just more content coming your way what happened with the great flood why the oceans haven't always existed and been as large and massive as they were all kinds of different theories coming your way so stay tuned looking forward to it stay in the love stay in the light be kind to others